on the struggle bus tonight. Technology challenges abound. So um, we're not going to let that stop us, though. We're going to paint right through this stuff. So, um, oops, sorry about that. So I got that all figured out over in the chat box for Zoom. Check it out. I posted a link where you can donate to the studio. And I also posted a link for all the supplies that you need tonight. So if you're unsure about colors, um, I've got it all listed out there for you. Everything you need. So jump on over to the chat feature and check that out. Um, we won't get started till 7 p.m. ish. So according to the clock on my stove right now, it's 6.57. So we won't get started for a good fat five minutes. So um, everybody settle in. Um, ask your questions over in the chat feature if you need. I have you all muted because that cuts down on um, mechanical feedback noise for me. Um, so ask your question over in the chat feature. Um, I did have a question and I saw Bets on. Are you there with me, Bets? She might be walking around, but I saw her log on. The question came up, what if I just want to paint a daisy? What color do I use to accent the white? Um, you could really use any color you want. I might use a little bit of gray to give it definition. So we can talk about that in a little bit, okay? So four or five minutes, settle in, we'll get started. And hi, Bets. I see you just said you're here. So I love, I'm scrolling around and looking. Y'all wearing your aprons? I have to put mine on so I can be one part of the crew now. <laughs> Everybody's got their aprons on. Um, for those of you that missed the first order, I did just place a second order. So they will be here yeah, probably about two weeks. If you need a studio apron, let me know. Send me a private message through uh, Crooked Door Studio Facebook. So three, four minutes and we'll get started. Alex, I saw your question come across. I only have neon orange. How do I tone that down? Maybe red. I'd be tempted to maybe use a little bit of red, a little bit of white. I'm leery to use like brown or black to tone down neon orange because that might make it a little too poopy looking. Um, I'd be tempted to say a little bit of maybe a little red and a little white. Mix those in with your neon orange. That should bring it back down a little. All right. So three, four minutes, we'll get started. Okay, it is just now, seven o'clock on the dot, according to the clock on my stove. Let's wait a couple minutes. I had a hard time logging into Zoom tonight. I know there was an update that needed to be done, so I had to do that before I could get in, and I see we're still gaining people a few at a time. So let's wait. Let's wait till about 7.05. I want to make sure everybody makes it in okay. All right, so about another four or five minutes. I want to make sure everybody can get in before we get started. So 7.05, we'll kick it off. So last call, get your beverage. Um, oh, the question always comes up. My paint dries really fast. What are the first paints we're gonna use? We're gonna do that background first. So if you don't wanna get all your paint out at once, the paint you need right now, if you're following our inspiration painting, you're gonna need a lot of white, a little yellow, a little green, a little blue. So a lot of white, a little yellow, little green, little blue. Okay, so about three, four minutes, 7.05, we'll get started. Thank you. 
Again, 7.05, we'll get started. You've got about two minutes. Um, I'm going to get out. I listed um, over in the chat feature, the link where you can donate to the studio. Every, every dollar counts, every penny counts at this point, right? Um, and I also listed out a list of supplies that you need for tonight. It has the paint colors listed out. So I'm gonna start, if you're in a place where your paint dries really fast and you only wanna get out what you need immediately, you need a lot of white, a little yellow, little blue, little green. That's where we're gonna start. So two minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and get my paint out. Two minutes and we'll get started. And for my, for my glitter friends, look what snuck into my bag. I know, I'm gonna glitter some stuff tonight. It's gonna happen. I know, Marie, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I thought about putting these in every bag as I load supplies. People would not be happy because if you don't like glitter and you found this in your bag, it would not be good. With that said, if you ever need glitter, let me know. I got tons. Right, Marie? <laughs> I went over this way. All right, everyone, let's get started. Sorry about that, one minute late. I had to take care of the bulldog. You know, whenever I get started and I'm ready to start painting, she's like, but mom, she's like a kid, she needed something. So we have her handled, I think, we'll see. All right, before I forget, let me hit the record button on the, uh, over on the um, GoPro. So welcome everyone, this is super exciting. Let's see, we have 52 logged on tonight. That's fantastic. Um, anytime we have big summer classes, I get excited because I know there's a million things to do outside. So I'm so happy you chose to stay in and hang out and paint with me tonight. Although it is kind of hot outside, so I'd much rather be in the air, but that's just me. Anyway, okay, can somebody give me a thumbs up so I know you can hear me, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, thank you. My biggest fear is I'll be here just talking away and y'all won't hear a word I've said. Although at some point you'll probably get tired of hearing my voice. That happens as well. Okay. 
So let me get this down. All right, my husband was making fun of me. He's like, time for a new sign. It'll be fine, right? We'll just press it out, it'll be fine. Okay, so the very first thing I wanna do, I wanna thank you all for being here, painting through the pandemic. Uh, the studio has been closed since mid-March, and I know some of you are from all over the country, um, so you've never been to the studio, but I hope to meet you someday at the studio. Right now, we're looking at a tentative tentative open date of July 9th because that's our five-year anniversary um, being at the studio. So we'll see. Stay tuned for that. Watch for that on Cricket Door Studio um, Facebook and um, Instagram. I'll post all the details there. So while I have you all here, um, for those of you that haven't joined us before, for those of you that have, just hang there with me. But if you've not painted with us before, so I'll walk us through this painting. This will take us until, I don't know, 9, 9.30, something like that. If the time comes that you start to get frustrated or tired or it's just not working out the way you want it to work out, don't worry. Put your brushes away. Put your paint down. Don't worry about it. Walk away from it. I am recording this on my GoPro, so I can post it up on the Crooked Door Studio YouTube channel tomorrow sometime. I've stopped listing a time for when it will be posted because sometimes loading a two and a half, three hour video takes a while. So sometime tomorrow it will be posted and then you can access it anytime, okay? So if you get, if you get behind or flustered or just put the pain away, maybe it's, not, maybe it's not your time tonight, okay? So the first thing I wanna do, let's talk about supplies. I always like to make sure I have everything I need before I get started. Um, check out the chat feature. Um, in Zoom, and there's listed out, I have listed a link where you can donate to the studio, and I also have listed out all the supplies you need for tonight. So your paint colors are there, all the stuff we're getting ready to go through is there. Okay, so here's our inspiration painting. I adore this painting, and I adore it for June for Pride Month. It makes me happy. So um, to be honest, this painting actually started out this way. It started out vertical. That's the way I painted it. It's probably the way I'm going to paint it tonight. But then once I got the flower on there, I had to flip it around and figure out which way was up and which way was down. And this is the way that made me the happiest. So I'm actually going to paint mine vertical because it's easier for me to do the flower petals to start it vertically. Okay. So I'm just gonna set this to the side. As we talk about supplies, the very first thing you need, there you go. the very first thing you need is an apron or a paint shirt. If you got supplies from the studio, the paint that we're using is acrylic paint, uh, water-based, water-soluble, but if you get it on your clothing and it dries, it's a real bear to get out. So make sure you have a paint shirt, something you're not super concerned about getting paint on. If you do get paint on your clothes and you notice it right away, you can rinse out with a little bit of warm water. If you don't notice it till later, Murphy's oil soap is your friend. Put a little bit of Murphy's oil soap on it, leave it set overnight, go back to it the next day with a toothbrush, scrub it out. Um, and that usually works for me. That's how I clean my brushes too. A little bit of Murphy's oil soap. I leave them soak in Murphy's oil soap. If you do though, leave your brushes soak in Murphy's oil soap, Never ever go all the way up past the where the metal reaches the handle. Never go, let me get an icy, I see people looking. Never get all the way up to the handle. The Murphy's oil soap will actually break down the glue that holds the metal to the handle. So you just want to make sure it's on the bristles and just right up in there. Okay. So like maybe an inch of Murphy's oil soap in a cup to leave them soak. Anyway. Okay. So we have our apron, our paint shirt, we're ready to paint. We have our canvas. So the canvas that I have tonight is a 16 by 20 stretched canvas. If you got supplies from the studio, this is what you have. Unless you got something special from me, you know who you are. Um, they're stretched, which means the canvas is stretched, wrapped around, stapled on the back. You're gonna wanna make sure as we paint, as we paint that background, to get your edges. We have the question, especially with this painting, do I need to wrap my petals around? You can see on this one, I did not. Um, it's, it's preference, it's totally up to you.
but you do want paint to wrap all the way around. That way when your painting is done, it's done. You don't have to frame it, you don't have to do anything else with it. It looks complete, it's wrapped all the way around. Okay, so think about now how you're gonna do your painting. Again, the finished product, I ended up flipping landscape, but for me, it's easier to paint those long petals if I have it vertical. Up to you. One of the first things we're gonna do is sketch that flower on there. So you'll be able to flip it around and see what works for you. Okay, so apron, paint shirt, canvas. Let's talk about uh, brushes. So tonight you need a big fat background brush. This is my big fat wash brush. You, yours might be fat, I'm fat, They're, they all should be fat. Yours might be flat, yours might be curved, entirely up to you. I love, nice, nice Colleen. I love a, um, a filbert, I love a rounded brush. It's up to you, right? It's whatever you're comfortable with. So you should have a big background brush. Alicia, if you're on here, your, your husband has yours in his office. I think I told you that. Anyway, you should have some kind of a smaller flat brush. Um, mine's a, he's not flat, mine's a filbert. He's rounded on the end, but he's skinny this way. Okay, that'll help us with some of our smaller details. You should have some kind of a pointy brush. The pointy brush that I'm using tonight is a number five. You could have anywhere from a three to an eight. It really doesn't matter how small it is as long as you can get it to a nice point, okay? Um, other things I have, I always keep a paint pen because I'm really bad at signing my name with a paintbrush. I just, I can't get that paintbrush to work for fine details. I'm more of a broad strokes gal. So paint pen, I always keep one of those in my bag. And then a pencil for giggles right? You never know. Uh, paper towels to blot your brushes on. I've got three or four paper towels laying down there. I've got a water cup. Um, a, I just use an old mason jar. You could use a coffee cup. I like something that's heavy that you're less likely to knock over. Um, make sure you only need it halfway full of water. You don't need to fill it to the top and make sure your water is cool or cold never warm or hot. If the water is warm or hot, it does something weird to the paint on your brush. It kind of dries it and curdles it and things get weird, okay? So cool or cold. Okay, let's talk about paint. So we're gonna work our way around um, the color wheel tonight. So if you wanna Google color wheel, so you have a picture to reference, but that's essentially what we're doing here this evening. Right, we have our primaries. So we have our uh, red, our yellow, and our blue, and then everything in between. So when we paint those petals, we're gonna work our way right on around that color wheel. But we're not there yet. We're gonna paint the background first. So I only have out the paint I need right now for my background because the warmer it is, the, the warmer the environment is, the faster the paint dries. Oh, excuse me. So right now I only have out white, yellow, and I'm using phthalo green. I like phthalo green for this one because it's, um, it's a darker, almost a little bit of turquoisey in there. It's not warm. It's not a, necessarily a warm green. It's more of a turquoise and it works really well with phthalo blue. Uh, the phthalo blue is just a real nice, deep, dark, almost a navy blue. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? The first thing we want to do, let me check out the chat feature real quick. <laughs> I'm looking at all the comments. So when I step away, I'm actually looking at my laptop because I can see more of you over there. I'm recording on my phone and I can only see like three of you at a time on my phone. Um, people commenting about glitter. I would never ever put glitter just willy nilly in your, in your supply kit unless you specifically requested it or unless your name is Augie, right? Because Augie needed glitter. Okay, 
So let's talk about, I want my flower colors, my flower petals to be nice and bright, nice, bright, colorful petals. That means I don't necessarily want background behind them. The paint that we use is acrylic paint. It's student grade acrylic paint. Student grade acrylic paint, it's fabulous. It's great to learn with. Um, the thing that makes it student grade and not, <laughs> you're welcome, Augie. Um, the thing that makes it student grade and not professional or artist grade means it's actually thinned down a little. It's, it has a lower pigment level. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot less expensive to buy. Um, but it's going to be more transparent. If you go shopping for paint, and I know a lot of you, this is your first time shopping for art supplies on your own. If you're shopping for paint and you see a tube of red that's $2 and a tube of red that's $20, you're like, why am I going to spend 20 bucks on that? That $20 paint is more than likely professional grade or artist grade. It has a much higher level of pigment. It's going to be a lot more solid. The $2 tube of paint, it's good paint. Essentially, it's what we're using, but it's much more transparent. With all of that said, if I go to paint that red on there and I have color in the background, I'm going to end up seeing through that red to whatever's cooking in the background. Okay. With that said as well, I'm going to keep my background a little lighter. And I'm not going to put my background everywhere I have those petals. So I'm going to start with sketching my flower so I know where my petals are going to live. It's a really long explanation for me to tell you we're going to sketch our flower on there. So I'm going to pick a color that I'm going to use in the background. Um, Beth, since you're doing a daisy, I would probably sketch yours with a really light gray. Um, I'm going to use just a little bit of yellow. I say that, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Pick a light color. You could sketch really lightly with a pencil. You could sketch with yellow. I'm going to pick something darker so you can see what I'm doing. Don't follow my dark choice, okay? Because it's going to be really hard to cover up later. I want you to pick something light or a pencil, I'm gonna go dark so you can see it. Okay, so the very first thing we wanna do, um, I'm gonna use green so you can see it. The very first thing you wanna do is take those brushes, pop them in your water cup, leave them there. Um, someone has said before um, that it's bad to leave your brushes in water cup. It is if you're gonna leave them there a long, long time but I'm gonna leave them in there so they stay soft. I don't have paint dry in them while I'm painting. You don't wanna leave them in there for a day, right? Because they'll get all funky and the brush, the bristles will bend. But for now, it's okay just until we're done painting. When we're done painting, you're going to clean them out really good with warm soapy water, shape them, and lay them flat to dry, and that'll, that'll take care of them. Okay, so my brushes are in my water cup. I'm gonna start with my medium brush, I think, to do some sketching. Again, you're gonna either use a pencil or you're gonna stay really light, like a yellow. I'm gonna go dark so you can see it. So I wanna start with the center of my flower. The center of my flower is like the size of my mitten, right, not a full hand but it's like the size of my mitten, maybe the size of a baseball. It's gonna be a hand width in from the side and a big fat hand from the bottom. So if you're looking for measurements, that's what I'm going with. So again, I'm gonna use a dark color so you can see what I'm doing. This is just a tiny bit of paint just to get it sketched on there. Okay, so a hand width in, fat hand from the bottom, He's gonna live right about there. Nice big circle. Yeah, if I did yellow, you'd never be able to see it. Okay. 
but I want you to stay light because it's going to be easier if you have an oops to get rid of or to cover up that light color than it would be to cover up a dark color like a blue or a green. And as I do this, I'm using my medium filbert, but I'm actually using it skinny ways. So I'm just sketching, just some very light sketches. Okay. So let's talk about, now that I have that on there, let's talk about our petals. I'm looking at the petals that you can see the full petal. I have some that peek in between. Not worried about those right now. I'm looking at the big full petals. So if I start here with love, with my, with my one big main petal that we're gonna start with, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, that one's kind of an in-between. We'll not count him. Nine, 10, 10-ish 10 petals. Okay, let's start with this very first one. He goes all like three-ish, three, maybe four fingers from the top. He's pretty tall, right? So again, just a little bit of that light color. Let's sketch him on there. So I'm actually gonna lay my brush. We always want to look at the middle of our center and go straight out from there for the point. You can lay your brush to make sure you're getting it straight out from the middle. Use your brush as a measurement. So I'm going to go straight up about three ish fingers from the top. That's where he's going to start. Curve him down and in. Go a little heavier so you can see what I'm doing. Down and in. Okay, petal number one. Look at that. We did it. Okay, my goal is to get about 10 full petals around there. So, petal number two is going to start right there beside that one. Oh, he goes right off. And again, use your brush so you can imagine where that petal might land. Number two. Number three does not go, he doesn't go straight out. He kind of angles up a little. Kind of. I guess he went straighter than I intended, but that's okay. Do you like this artist? We just make it up as we go. He doesn't go straight. Well, maybe he does. I don't know. Okay, just working our way around. Three, there's four. Number five reaches down there. And I'm kind of saying the colors in my brain as I go. Right, so if we look at them side by side. So I have red, orange, little orangey yellow, got a yellow, I've got a limey green. I'm gonna get ready and put on a green green. I guess now that I'm looking at it, if I have if this red petal is straight up, the lime green and the green green, those are like legs, right? 
so weird. Making stuff up now, sorry. My blue, my blue reaches out into this corner. I just put my, my green on there. My blue reaches out almost to that corner. He's, he's a couple fingers-ish away from the corner. That's what I love about this painting. It fills the space, right? I don't want just this little flower right in the middle. I want to fill that canvas. Now remember, it's really easy. It's really easy to get your um, to get your petals kind of twisted. So continue. I'm putting my brush in the center of the flower and pointing out so I know where where the end of that flower lives. That the end of that petal. And I saw someone just commented they're having a hard time with their spacing. It's okay. You might just have more petals. It'll be fine. If you wind up with more with more petals, we just have to keep in mind when we put our colors on there that we want red in this vicinity of the canvas. We want yellow in this vicinity of the canvas. And we want blue in this vicinity of the canvas. So if you have lo a lot of long skinny petals, I have, let's see, there's my yellow, there's my true blue. So I have yellow and then I have one, two, three, four, five before I get to true blue. Maybe you have seven, maybe you have three, up to you. We just have to remember to keep those colors in those vicinities so we get the entire color wheel in. Beautiful thing about art, right? We wing it, it'd be all right, it'd be fine. Okay, let's keep going. So my next petal, so this is the blue one that reaches, he's kind of bluey green, he reaches all the way out to that corner. My next one, this, this dark, dark bluey purple, Pretty straight out ish. Ooh, he went way far. He went way far out there. Ooh, this is where it gets to be a challenge. I'm actually, going to turn my canvas because it's easier for me to paint straight up and down. I want to get two more in here. So I'm laying my brush toward the center of that, that flower. So I know I'm going to have one that lives about here and one that lives about here. Something like that. Look, Mandy, my space got weird too. I'm all right with it. Because once we, we're not gonna do that now. You know what, maybe we will. Maybe we will do that now. Let's fill in some gaps. What if, if I have a bigger space? What if I put two, two in there? What if I have a smaller space and I only need one back pedal? So this is where you can help fix your spacing. This one, I feel like you might only have one, one back pedal there. So I've got these big primary pedals and then these random back pedals. Ooh, this is a big space here. I feel like he might need two. It might take two petals to fill that in. I 
we go. Again, there's no right or wrong here. One petal. Oops. I need one here. And one. Kind of looks messy, doesn't it? That's okay. We'll fix it. We'll play. But I know kind of where my flower's gonna live now. So I'm gonna take that brush, pop it in my water cup. Um, how about we take a good 10 minutes, have everybody get there, get their flowers on there. You can kind of start to envision where. Oh, goodness, where your colors are going to live. Again, you have to make sure to get the whole color wheel. You have to get red in this vicinity, yellow down here, and blue over here. It's that primary color triangle. Again, it might take you 15 color changes to get from one to the next, where it might take your neighbor four color changes. It's okay. So as I look at this, and we're all still putting our petals on there, I know all of this is going to be background, right? But I also know I'm going to have to get a little bit of background down in here. Don't forget these spots. So it's 7.35, how about 7.45? We'll come back together and we'll start getting our background on there. Okay, if something for you has gone terribly sideways, which it does, no big deal. If it's gone terribly sideways, let it dry for a minute. The white that we use is called block out white. So come back in with a little bit of white and paint back over. If you have a line that has gone totally crazy, a little bit of white will fix it, okay? All right, so about 10 minutes, we'll come back together, All right? And Alicia, don't forget to breathe. This is where I remind all my people to breathe, it's okay. How long have you been painting flowers? About 30 minutes now, you're doing fine, okay? It'd be all right. <laughs> oh my god so again when i disappear it's because oh i got i have like weird light shining on me from my back uh my back window shade um because the sun sets at the back of the house and that light is just streaming in <laughs> i was scrolling through when you get a chance scroll through and see what everybody else is doing baby yoda is in full force tonight baby yoda is here painting with us i feel like last time baby yoda painted with us I think Baby Yoda's in Indiana or Chicago. I think Baby Yoda's not in Ohio because Baby Yoda had to flee the last time to the basement for tornado warnings, I think. So I'm so happy. I, I'm so happy. I love you, Baby Yoda. I'm so happy you made it back this time. <laughs> it's funny, I'm just scrolling through. There he is, just chilling. All right, so about, um, about eight-ish minutes or so. We'll move on. Again, if you have petals that went crazy, wipe the excess paint off with your finger or a paper towel. Give it a second to dry. Patch it with some white. And this is the point where I feel like I need to get close so you can see how messy mine is. Mine is messy. Like, look, this, I don't know what happened there. Oh, Cindy, I see you just joined. No, we did not paint the whole thing white. We are just now starting with sketching our flower on there. 
that's that's just where we started. We're gonna move on next to our background at about 7.45. Well, about another five minutes. I love scrolling through. I keep going over to the laptop because I can see uh, 25 of you at a time on the laptop. So scrolling through over there, we have 60 participants tonight, which is pretty fantastic. Um, it's it's interesting scrolling through. I'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of old. I shouldn't say old faces. That sounds bad, but you know what I mean a lot of faces that are coming back week after week and that makes my heart happy because i know what painting does for my mental health so i'm so glad y'all are here painting with me getting it out um i tell people at the studio all the time i'm sure you've heard me say it here before um painting for me and i think for you as well should be more about process less about product if you enjoy the feel of the paint and you enjoy creating and you enjoy doing this, do it, right? If you walk out of here tonight with a cool painting, that's super cool too, right? But if it makes you feel good, that's what it's about. I will paint on occasion and turn out complete crap. And that's okay because I got out whatever was going on. I got it out there on the canvas and I felt better after. So everybody breathe, breathe it out, relax. It's all in fun, right? So about three minutes or so, we'll move on. <laughs> That's funny, Sandy. <laughs> I love, so Sandy said this painting is for her son and I absolutely adore that. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't involve trees. And I love that Sandy hates trees. She hates to paint trees, but whenever I do a tree painting, she signs up. So is that sadistic? I'm not sure. I don't know, but 
I'm curious, um, who all tonight is painting for Pride? I posted this up because I thought it was it was perfect for Pride. I know some of you are, so you'll have to let me know. And I know some of you aren't, and that's okay too. Awesome, Emily. Yes, Sandy, well done. So I've done this painting several times at the studio. That's awesome, Leslie. Yes. I'm watching comments come across the screen. Um, oh, I love that, Jessica, adding a dove. So it's peace and love. I love that. I love it. Okay. Oh, when I did this, I've done this painting several times at the studio. We have two minutes, by the way, before we get on the background. And the, again, the finish, I know some of you are just now joining us. The finished painting turned out to be sideways, um, turned out to be landscape because that's what made me happy. It's a little weird though, because if you look at it, the highlight in my flower is at the bottom with my painting sideways because I initially painted it to be vertical like this. So the highlights at the top. But then when I put my word on there, it turned this way. So I don't know what my point is with that. Oh, I painted this several times. And the one time I painted um, with my paint pen, love is love, which I love that for pride. I'm trying to think of what I put on the other ones. Hmm, I don't remember. Um, but if you look at the original painting, I'm sure you probably can't tell, but I wrote the love in paint pen. And if you move fast, you can glitter paint pen. So I wrote it on there pretty quickly and then laid it flat and glittered it while it was wet. And it looks, if you see it in person, it looks lovely with a little bit of glitter on the, on the love. Okay. It's funny. Somebody asked me once upon a time, I think it was last week, maybe, can you stall? I'm not quite ready yet. I'm the queen of stall. I'm not even trying to stall and I'm stalling. Okay. So I don't know if you can hear, but my bulldog has decided to chime in. So let's go ahead now and paint the background. And while we're painting the background, I will handle the bulldog. Um, it's such a cute little bark. So let's paint the background. And remember, as we paint the background, don't forget, you might have some little spaces down here. Don't forget about those, okay? Now you don't have to be 100% precise with the background, um, but you wanna get right up to your lines. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna use, and don't forget your edges. My background is a lot of white, little blue, little green, little yellow. And it jumps around. Up here, there's a little more yellow. Here, there's a little more blue, a little more green over here. It just kind of jumps all over the place. So I'm not gonna mix my paint ahead of time. I'm gonna let it happen on my canvas, keeping in mind that acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend, but it does blend while it's wet. So I'm gonna start up here in this top left corner. I'm gonna use my big, my big wash brush, swish them around in there and dry them off. And I'm going to take, anytime you take color, we always go in the edge. Never the middle of the puddle, because you don't want to mess the whole thing up, right? We always pull from the edge. So I'm going to take a big old chunk of white, loading that brush up with white. And I'm going to start with maybe just a little, whoop, just a little squish of green. Zerp, just a little squish. And I'm going to go, my background is like really flat X's. Somebody said before, infinity symbol, kind of. So I'm gonna get close so you can see. 
So that right now is just green and white. Oh, edges, don't forget your edges. Now, while that's wet, I'm going to take another big squish of white. I'm not rinsing my brush out. Another big squish of white and maybe a little bit of yellow. And I can blend those two together while that green is wet. How pretty that is. So we're going to paint all the way around that flower. I'm going to get right up to those petals. If you get over them a little, that's okay. I'm not spending a lot of time getting real precise around them because I know the color for the petals will lay right over top of that background oops. Okay. So let's go ahead, paint that background. I'm using a lot of white, and each time I'm gonna take one of my other colors. A lot of white, ooh, I haven't done blue yet. Tiny, tiny bits of color though, because those colors are powerful. And just blend it and play, and don't forget those bottom pieces that might, that might not be petals, don't forget those. So I'm going to step away while you work on the background, get all of your edges as well, paint them as you go. We don't want any naked edges. And I'm gonna clean up paint that I just spilled and handle the bulldog. And I will be back in a few minutes. Let's keep going on those backgrounds. Bulldog's okay. All right. Okay. Lot of white. And each time I just I I'm just going right around the colors. A lot of white. Back to a little bit of green. that edge, get that tippy top. Don't forget your edges. Again, I know we can get really wrapped up in trying to get precise around the petals. Please don't. Oops, I just bumped my whole situation. I got right over top of that line, right? I'm okay with that. I just don't want to get that all down in here in my petals, but I'm okay if it comes over top of my lines a little bit. That helps me move a little faster, and I'm not worried about it being super precise, but I do need to make sure and get right down in on those petals. So the question has come up, will I continue to do this um, Zoom even after the studio's open? Because my hope is to have the physical studio space back open um, in July. That's my hope, we'll see. Um, I'm not gonna do it until I'm completely convinced that we're 100% safe. And I know there are things I can do now to, um, to have groups in the studio but I worry about us sitting all together for three hours at a time. I, anyway, that's my, that's my own issue to deal with. But, so the question comes up, will I continue to do this even after the physical studio is open? And the answer is yes. My husband right now, man is a freaking saint, is working on um, an arm 
for my easel that will, an adjustable arm that will hang out and over above my easel so I can mount my cell phone and I can mount my GoPro so I can record and still be in the studio teaching a class. So I think that's pretty exciting. So yes, we will still do um, supply pickup and Zoom classes even once the physical studio is able to open back up. Oh, Kelsey, I hear people say that they're able to, to actually attend more and paint more um, with, with being virtual and doing it at home. I hear that. I also like that. I hear from people, they can, um, oh, Bulldog's back at it. I'm going to have to handle her. Um, you can have more beverage and not have to worry about driving. I so appreciate that, the safety along with that. Okay, we're gonna keep going, painting that background. Again, get your edges. Don't forget about the little bits down in there that aren't gonna be petals, okay? And I'm gonna go resolve that. I'll be back, we'll check in in five minutes, see where we're at. I don't think we'll be ready in five minutes, but we'll check in. What's up, sister? Okay, I gotta finish my background. Can you still hear me, Marie? All right, cool, cool. Thank you. Okay. Still working on my background.
okay so i had to um i had to go um let the bulldog out right because she was upset about something so we i am a new ish chicken mama and we live out in the country and we have a we have a bunch of chickens we just added couldn't say babies they're teenagers they're about 10, 12 weeks, 11 weeks old, I think. Um, they're about 11 weeks old or so. We have a fence to keep the big girls in. The holes in the fence are about this big. Those little teenage chickens run right through the holes in the fence. So Gertrude, my dog, was barking because Amber, the troublemaker of the crew, is just hanging out right outside the door just to talk and away. So that's why I had to take care of Gertrude. I was like, what is she barking at? Oh, that would be Amber teasing her right outside the door. Oh, Amber. There's one in every group. So when we got our uh, when we got our chicks, we uh, we learned, uh, or we learned, that was the wrong thing to say. When we got our chicks, we got an assorted pack. So we don't know what they are. We know they like colorful eggs, but we have no idea what they are. And we just learned last night, now that they're old enough that they have their, their big girl feathers, we learned the one is an Egyptian Fayumi. You'll have to Google that. They look like a road runner. And they are evidently the troublemakers of the chicken world. They run really fast. They don't listen. They perch in trees. That would be Amber, the one outside my door. Oh, Amber. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to get in there. That might be background space. Okay. Covering all those little places that I think might be background. Here we go. And edges. Don't forget the edges, right? So I'm going to take my painting and hang it. Um, if you get easels from the studio, which I do still have some, if you get them from the studio, they have this little top bar that's very nice. If you're outside, you can clamp the top bar down on your canvas so it doesn't blow. Or if you're inside, you can pick it up and hang it so you can get to that bottom edge. So how about 8.05, we'll start putting color on our petals. That's a good five minutes. Take this moment too, even if you're not done with your background, take this moment too. If you had to do some fixing up here with white paint, take a peek and see if it needs another coat. If you need to get another layer on to fix something. Now's the time because we're about five minutes out from starting to put color on there. And then edges, all those edges. we go painting looks so messy right now but we learn don't judge it halfway through the process right we don't talk about how it looks till it's done so i'm not gonna worry about it but just so you know mine looks pretty messy right now okay another three four minutes Colleen, I see your comment. You filled in some of the smaller petals. No worries, we'll put them back on. No worries. So I'm going to take a moment and get out some more paint. 
because again, I just started with my background colors. So I'm gonna start to get out um, bits of other colors. Um, you may already have them on your palette and that's okay, but I'm, I did not to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of those other colors. I'm gonna get my red and my orange. No black yet. You know, I do. we do need a little bit of black. We're gonna need a little bit of black when we get over here to this blue, to this really, really dark blue into purple. So we're gonna start with our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then get really dark into black. So we're not gonna need it for a while, but we will need it. So we'll take a couple more minutes on those backgrounds. Get the rest of your flower colors out. If you've boogered up all your white, get a little clean white. In a couple minutes, we'll move on. So I just, add, oh, black, I need black. I just added a little bit of orange and red to my palette. I'm gonna add a little bit of black too, maybe on a different plate. Cause I'm out of room on that one. So another minute or so. We'll move on. So while we're stalling, giving everyone another minute or so, um, make sure you have the rest of your flower colors out, your petals out. Um, I already have the painting picked for next week. Super excited about it. Um, I had several suggestions come in uh, for water scenes, um, for very colorful things, um, for boats, for uh, tropical like palm trees. And we have a painting that encompasses all of that. So if you're longing to be on a boat out in the water with some palm trees, next week is for you. So I will post that painting up, um, that inspiration painting, I'll post it tomorrow evening sometime. I know, right, Cindy? Oh, it's pretty. It's, um, you can change the colors too. You never have to do the colors that we're doing, but it's, Marie, correct me if I'm wrong, it's purples and reds and blues and, right? Yes. And black, there's some black down in around the, around the sides. The palm trees are in black, so they look like they're in silhouette. The boat, I think, is in black, yeah. And we get to use some of the techniques that we've learned. So I've not done 10-Minute um, Technique Tuesdays the last couple weeks, um, other, things, other things happening. I'm hoping to get back to those. But if you get a chance, um, go to the Crooked Door Studio YouTube channel. I've also posted them on Facebook. Um, I do 10 Minute Technique Tuesdays. And so far we've done um, learning about how to paint water. We've done clouds. We've done flowers. We've done trees. We've talked about just supplies, just art supplies. So before, before next Saturday, if you're gonna join us, you might check out some of the 10 Minute Technique Tuesday videos because I know there's one there how to paint water and how to paint clouds. 
those will be really helpful when it comes time to paint next Saturday evening. Okay, here we go. Let's work on those petals. So the most important thing when it comes to painting petals, I'm gonna use a big brush and all of my brush strokes are gonna be long, skinny. We're gonna start with like the outline of the petal and then fill it in, but they're gonna be long from the tip all the way to the middle. Don't worry if you get color in the middle, we'll fix that later, okay? But those long brush strokes and your petals can be nice and smooth and all one color, or they can be streaky. Like look at this orange one, he's very streaky. It's okay if he's streaky because you start out at the end and those long strokes to the middle. I'm gonna use my big brush because my big brush holds more paint, but I'm gonna use it skinny ways for the most part. I'm gonna load it up with paint and paint it skinny ways. Let's go back to what we talked about in the very beginning. You may have a different number of petals than I have, but we wanna work our way around the color wheel making sure this top vicinity is red, the bottom right vicinity is yellow, and the bottom left-ish is blue. If you need to Google color wheel and pull up a picture of a color wheel so you can see how we're gonna work around because we're gonna start here with red and we're just gonna work our way on around. So red, orange, little bit of yellow, by the time we get down here to this corner, it's gonna all be yellow. And then we're gonna work our way through the greens over into blue. And then we're gonna work our way through purple back up to red. So if you need to pull up a picture of a color wheel, that might help. But the color wheel triangle, those primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Okay, big brush. Lean that big brush out. Tap, tap, tap him in the bottom of the water cup. I always tap, tap, tap him down in there. That helps knock the paint off. Tap, tap, tap. And then dry him off on your paper towel. And I know all of my paint is very transparent. So I may have to add little bits of white. If you add a lot of white, your flower is going to get very pastel and very light colored. But a little bit of white will make your paint solid and won't lighten it too much, but just a little. So let's start with just red and see what happens. So I've got a big old chunk of red. And again, I'm using that brush skinny ways. I'm outlining that petal. And then I'm filling it in with those big up and down brush strokes. It's a lot of red. I might add a teeny bit of white, and I do mean a teeny bit. Just the littlest bit right there on the end. It's such a tiny bit. Too much and it'll all turn pink on me but a little bit will, will add something fun to it. Long brush strokes. And look, I'm getting in the middle a little. I'm getting a little messy in there. That's okay. We'll put that center on later and we'll fix that. Oops, let me put that down. There we go. Now, as we do this, as we work our way around the color wheel, I'm not going to rinse out my brush. Don't rinse it until I tell you to, because we're going to gradually work our way around. So with that red in there, I'm going to start to add a little orange next. I want a little bit of red left in there. I will tell you when it's time to rinse out. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm working my way around to the right. Got some red in there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange. Let's get one of these little petals back. Oh, he has a little bit of a poo color because I can see that green through in the background. Gonna add just a little bit of white, just a tiny, tiny bit. That will make him more solid. So I can't see the poo color back here. There we go. So that petal is red orange. This is like a box of crayons, right? This one is red. This one is red orange. The next one is gonna be orange red. The next one is gonna be orange. I always thought that was funny in the crayon boxes because they had blue green and green blue. And I'm like, what the, what's the difference? Well, the first color is heavier. So red and then red orange. So this one has a little more red in it. My next one, however, will have a little more orange in it. Still a little bit of red, but it'll have a little more orange. Oh, a little bit of white. And the, the differences right now are so subtle. But as we work our way around, you'll start to see a difference. And then this big petal here is orange. So if you have red on your brush, Wipe it off on your paper towel. You don't have to rinse it out, but just if you have a goober of red on there, wipe it off. And this one is gonna be orange and a little bit of white. So at this point, we should have gone gradually from red over to orange. So again, this one is orange with a little bit of white. And again, I, I think I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. We have the conversation about painting the edges of our canvas. Do I need to wrap those petals around? That is 100% up to you. You wanna make sure the edges are painted, but I'm not necessarily a fan of wrapping the petals around. Up to you, I think sometimes, sometimes when you wrap color around, if I were to wrap those petals around, it could look distorted. Um, totally up to you. So again, remember this one's orange and white and long skinny brush strokes. Long brush strokes. And I love that I have some white streakiness happening in there. I love that. And I'm not worried about making a mess of the center. I'll fix that later. And white is so your friend if you're trying to hide something because the white is block out white. Oh, I know some of you ask me, um, since you're shopping for your own supplies, some of you ask me, is titanium white the same as block out white? Um, no. And yes, I mean, it's white and it's nice and heavy, but the block out white has a little more pigment in it to make it a little more solid. Now that's with um, acrylic paint, with student grade acrylic paint. It's totally different if you're talking about other paints. Bob, if we love our Bob, right? Bob paints um, with titanium white all the time. That's where we know titanium white from. Bob paints in oils. That's a different beast. And when the studio opens back up, we'll be able to do oil painting again, which I'm super excited about.
Okay, so back to our box of crayons. We've gone red, red, orange, orange, red, orange. I'm going to start at, I'm not going to rinse out. I'm going to start adding yellow. By the time I get down here, again, it's that primary triangle. By the time I get down to this vicinity, I want that to be pretty solid yellow. Okay. So I've got orange on my brush. I grab a little yellow, a little white. Got to remember those little bits of white. And remember to breathe. Let this be what it's going to be, right? It's going to be a beautiful rainbow of color is what it's going to be. Okay. I feel like that orange is so powerful. I'm gonna to get to the point that I'm gonna to have to rinse it out to get to solid yellow, but not yet. I know my solid yellow is gonna be down here. I'm gonna go one more time by just adding yellow, yellow and white. That's still a very warm yellow. Let's see, let's rinse that brush out. You know what, let's take, I'm gonna take a five-ish minute break, let everybody get to that same point. And at this point, I feel like I might wanna go rinse my water out. I'm gonna have a really hard time if there's anything at all in my brush, I'm gonna have a hard time getting this really bright yellow. So I'm gonna take this opportunity and rinse my water out, clean my brushes out, I'll be back in about four or five minutes. Um, make sure too, as you go, that you're keeping a little bit of clean white. You'll see as I use my white paint, I keep using right around the edge of it so I can keep going on around and get clean white. I'm getting to the point, I only have this little spot left that's clean. I'm gonna have to get another puddle of clean white somewhere. So. Clean brushes, clean water, clean white. Be back in about four or five minutes. And don't forget, as you get that clean water, don't forget cool or cold, 
never warm or hot. Always cool water in your water cup. I'm gonna wait another couple minutes. It's so hard for me to judge how fast or slow I need to go. I'm, I'm used to having people in the studio with me to be able to feed off of, see what everybody's doing. So I'm just gonna take my time tonight. And I know there's at least a couple of you out there that were like, taking your time, slow down, woman. I know we all painted our own pace. <sighs> okay, I'm going to move on in another minute. Make sure that you have clean water, some clean white, clean brush. It's going to be hard as we as we blend from color to color, we never really rinse our brush out. There are certain times that we do though. We're gonna have to rinse it out really good to get a nice bright solid yellow down there. Um, the next time we might rinse our brush would be when we work our way up and start getting into a little bit of red. And we would do that because these colors are really dark, but we would do that because as we work our way around, we could still have green in our brush. And as we work our way around, if I get up here and I start to add red and I still have green in my brush, I'm gonna get poop and I don't want poop. So that this might be the next time we rinse out, we'll see. Okay, big brush. My lines down here are really, are really heavy. This blue line is super duper heavy. So I'm gonna have to add white to, to kind of um, camouflage that line down there. So don't be afraid to add a little bit of white. All right, big brush, yellow. Make sure you're grabbing yellow in a clean spot, not the spot that might have a little, a little orange in it. Clean yellow. And a little bit of clean white. And this should be pretty, pretty primary yellow down there. Bulldog is barking again, which tells me, Amber, my Egyptian Fayumi is back at the door. Oh, Amber, what are we gonna do with her? So you'll notice, you may have this happening on yours. I can see my lines through my yellow. It's our tendency when that happens to add more paint to try to cover it. Acrylic paint doesn't work that way. If you keep adding heavier and heavier paint, you're just gonna start picking up half wet paint, half dry paint. You have to let it dry, put another coat on it, okay? So I'm gonna move on from it. I may have to come back in a little bit and put another, another little coat of yellow on it, but for now I'm gonna move on. So if you're using phthalo green like I am, I have my bright yellow down here. I'm gonna move on to this lime color. I'm gonna use the teeny, teeny, teeny. I cannot emphasize this enough, the teeniest bit of phthalo green because that phthalo green is super powerful. So yellow and white on my brush. Yellow and white. And I'm gonna add 
the teeniest bit. Like I'm gonna take that brush and just, ooh, just barely eek, just barely eek it in there. Like the tiny, tiniest bit. Because phthalo green will take over in a hot second if I'm not careful. I can always add more, but once I have too much phthalo green, it's hard to go back from there. So now remember our ultimate goal, red, yellow, by the time I get over here, I want it to be pretty um, primary blue. So let's work our way that direction. Probably use a little more green. This is where stuff goes sideways. I can use a little more green and then it's all solid green. So I'm going to leave that mess that's in my brush and this time just add green. Little bit though. Green is so powerful. Okay. As we work our way around, we're back to our box of crayons. Green, blue, blue, green, blue, right? The first color is always heavier. So this one's gonna be green, blue. You're gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of blue. As you work your way around, you're gonna start to add more blue till you get to solid blue. Okay. And I'm not rinsing out. I'm fine with what I have in my brush. I still have a little yellow in there. I'm okay with that. We need to worry when we start to add red. We're not there yet. So I've gone from yellow to yellow green, green yellow. This one's gonna be very, very green, maybe a little blue, very green. Again, just working our way around that color wheel. Start to add some blue. Man, if you thought that phthalo green was powerful, that uh, phthalo blue is just as powerful. And I'm, I'm gonna stay pretty dark, but every now and then maybe a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white, just a tiny bit. I have a, um, like more petals than I intended, so I might have a couple petals that are blue green. You might have only one, that's okay. Okay. 
keep in mind that primary color triangle. I know I sound like a broken record. But that's what teaching's about, right? I keep saying it so we pick it up. I know if you learn the way I do, I only hear it when I'm ready to hear it. That's why I just keep saying it. Keep in mind the primary triangle. So I have red at the top, yellow down there, blue over here, okay? So I've got my solid blue down here in this part of my triangle. So now I'm gonna start to head into red. Be very careful. If you have any goobers of green on your brush, you wanna wipe those goobers of green off. Because if you have green in your brush, and you start to add red, those are opposites on the color wheel, you'll get poop. So make sure you've got the green out of your brush. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna rinse mine out. Just to make sure, because I don't want a poop flower. Okay. So I've rinsed it out. I'm gonna find some blue that has not had green in it. Some clean blue. And a little bit of red. So this one is blue red and then we're gonna go to red blue. Oh, well, maybe a little more red. Again, I'm so happy y'all are here to paint tonight. This makes my heart happy. Because again, I know what this does for my mental health. I talk pretty openly about my mental health and my mental health struggles. And painting is a huge piece of, of my, my, me caring for myself and my mental health. So I'm so glad through this whole weird pandemic thing that I'm able to keep painting and painting with you. And that makes my heart happy. And again, I sound like a broken record, but it really does. It makes my heart happy. It does me a world of good. Um, so while I have your attention too, while we're painting, we're gonna go blue and we're gonna start to add red to get ourselves back up to that primary red. So let's just keep going. We've got blue, start to add little, little bit more red as you go. We wanna get a lovely purple in here. Uh, there will come a point that we'll call this painting done. There'll come a point that I'll call it done, 9, 9.30, whatever it is. Let's say 9.30, I will give you one hour until 10.30. You'll have exactly one hour to send me your, I would love to see a selfie of you with your painting, to send it private message to Crooked Door Studio on Facebook. So then I have an hour to gather all of those together compile them into a group photo because a little group uh, video collage photo because if we were at the studio when we were done we would all get together for a group photo and since we're not at the studio we can't do that but we can still do it virtually so I will remind you when we're done what you need to do but keep that in mind because I know the time comes that some people start dropping out early I want to make sure that you get your painting to me an hour of the ending time of class within an hour. Okay, so blue, maybe a little white, a little more red for my next one. This one's gonna be a real deep plum. Oh, love that color. Working my way back up to that primary red. So less blue each time. I've got a lot of petals to fill in here.
going. I'm adding, starting to go a little more red each time. So gradual. This is where we start to have the conversation. Um, what if I have too many petals that are too similar? Um, you wanna keep the change gradual, but I'm kind of having that happen here. I have a lot of ones that are kind of red purple and they're all very similar. You might have a hard time distinguishing different petals. We'll do that, that'll be our next step. We're gonna take with our smaller brush, little bits of black and little bits of white, and that'll help us, we'll contour those petals a little bit. So don't worry too much if it looks like you have one ginormous red purple petal there. We'll, uh, we'll work on separating those out in a little bit. Comes a point when you have to stop touching it, right? I'm going to put my brush in my water cup, step away from it for a minute, get a beverage. How about we take a good 10 minute break, check and see on this break, once you're done, once you have all your colors on there, check and see if you have any big chunks of wet paint here in the middle, okay? I'm just running my finger around smoothing out, whoops, smoothing out any chunks of paint I might have there so it dries a little faster because I think that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna put a solid base in there, then we'll contour our petals, and then we'll come back and we'll do some messy stuff in the center of our flower. So that's how we're gonna, we're gonna wrap, out, wrap out the evening. That's not even what I wanted to say. Finish out, wrap up, there we go, or wrap out. That's how we're gonna wrap out the evening. We're gonna come back in about 10 or so minutes, put a nice base coat of color in here, then contour our flowers, then mess that center up. Then we'll decide if we need to put a word on, if we need to glitter, what else we need to do to finish it up, okay? So it's 8.42, how about 8.55 sounds good. Okay, 8.55, according to the clock on my stove, because we're in my kitchen at home, so you can't see it. But trust me, it says 8.42, so 8.55 will move on. I'm going to go in and give you the opportunity to unmute yourself if you want. Um, give me just a moment here.
There we go. You should have the ability now to unmute yourself if you want. Marie, were you unmuted this whole time? No, so weird. Who knows? Things are weird. Flip your painting around, Marie. Let me, let me see what you're working on. Marie's, she's gone rogue tonight. Oh, you did the cactus one. Dude, I love that. Everybody look at Marie's painting. That's beautiful. Dude, is it wrong that I want like a little Area 51 sign and like a little alien like peeking out from behind the cactus? He needs like little green glitter eyes. That would be spectacular. <laughs> All right, so about 11 minutes at 8.55, we'll move on. And you have the ability right now, um, if you wanna unmute yourself, you can. But I see you're all still working really hard on those pedals, so carry on. I'm going back to my, my studio experience when we've done this painting at the studio. Um, I have had people ask me, so I'm going to use a paint pen to write my word on my, um, on my pedal. And I know my paint pen from experience. I know my paint pen will stay wet long enough that I can get some glitter on it. Now, I'm going to have to move fast, but I can do that. I've had people ask me, can I use a Sharpie and accomplish the same thing? Sharpies don't stay wet nearly as long as a paint pen. Um, so I wouldn't advise it. I would wait until you can run to the store and get a paint pen. They've got them at Walmart or Meyer or any of the art supply stores. Um, I think mine came from Hobby Lobby, but you could use like a Sharpie. I'm just using like a, mine's just a paint marker. I think it came from Hobby Lobby. Um, but I do know the paint pens stay wet longer than just a Sharpie if you're going to glitter it. If you're not going to glitter it, you can absolutely just use a Sharpie on there. Okay. <gasps> Ooh, Colleen, that looks good. Look at all those colors. Yes. That makes me so happy. Yes. <laughs> um, me too, right? I went to open my black paint and got it all over myself. But you know, that's why we talk about paint shirts and aprons and, right? I didn't quite get this bottom yellow green. It you kind of went from yellow to yellow green back to yellow, huh? Yeah. So I'm looking at your painting. It goes from orange. Let me see it again. From orange to yellow to yellow green and then black back to yellow. That second yellow, what if you add just a little more, um, a little more green to it? Up to you. So won't have as many yellow flowers. <laughs> or how about you take the that first yellow green one and you add a little bit of yellow white over it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I'm so excited as we uh, as we're so I'm I'm filming on my on my cell phone. So as I'm looking at my cell phone just to see what everybody's doing, I have, I'm getting text messages right now that um, a friend of ours plants sweet corn for a bunch of us. Um, he plants, I don't know, maybe an acre, maybe an acre of sweet corn. That sounds about right. And I just got texted images and the sweet corn's all this tall. I'm so excited. We're going to have sweet corn. <laughs> I have my pencil marks showing through. Um, my video isn't on, but on the lighter colors, my pencil marks are showing through. What can I do? A little bit of white. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. The white that we use is block out white and it'll camouflage it a little bit. Um, if I look at the original, I had that happen in a couple places. Um, if, if it's right, a little bit of white, 
swoosh. You could use the color that you had been using and add white to it. I had to add a lot of white to my yellow down here to cover up my dark line. Hope that helps. Okay, about seven minutes. I love it, the bulldog finally napped out, but she napped out facing the door in case Amber comes back. Oh, Amber. If you're curious as to what I'm talking about, my chickens have their own social media page. Of course they do, right? So if you're bored, because um, we still have six minutes before we move on, check out on Facebook, Georgie and the Hen House Cluckers. Um, it's kind of a circus over there in the chicken coop. So if you're looking for some entertainment, check out Georgie and the Hen House Cluckers. And you'll see Amber. She's the rule breaker that's outside the fence. Sweet, sweet Amber. Hi, Sean and Sue from Florida. It's Tanya. Hey, Tony! What is hey. up? Oh, like an hour. I love it, boo. <laughs> what words are you going to put on it? Um, I think I'm going to say... Uh, um, I don't know. I was thinking about it a little bit ago. What are the words, Tani? What are the words? I don't know. I was thinking about it a little bit ago, and I'm like, I don't know what to do yet. It'll okay. be a surprise. I like it. <laughs> That's fair. I'm so glad you came to play. Every Saturday, and Rick leaves at like 7.15 to go to work. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you, you got to go, because it's Saturday, because I got to... I got an appointment, okay? Right? <laughs> so <laughs> go to work. Doc gets, Doc gets home at um, about 6.30-ish. Sometimes he's a little late. So I'm trying to log on at 6.45 to get everything all set up. And he's standing here wanting to talk about his day. And I'm like, you got to, you got to go. <laughs> I got things to do. <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, I packed your bag and um, here's your keys and here's your wallet and did you take your medicine? And um, bye. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <sighs> so about four more minutes, four more minutes and we'll move on. How do you go from the purple to the lighter reddish purple? Um, just less blue, more red. Okay. That blue, if you're using phthalo blue, that phthalo blue is so stinking powerful. Yeah. You might have to rinse your brush out to get the blue out of it. Okay. Because mine just kept chain, kept staying that same purple color because you have to use three times as much red to that one, like three parts red to one part blue. It just, yeah. So you might need to rinse your brush out is the short, the short long answer. So we've got three-ish minutes before we move on, um, I'm gonna have you, we don't need it yet, but I'm gonna have you look through your supplies and see if you can find a crappy old brush. Um, a br if you don't have one, that's okay. You can use one of your new brushes or you can use a paper towel. But I'm going to see, I'm going to go through my paint bag and see if I can find a yucky old brush that's all splayed out that I'm going to use down here in the bottom. We're not going to do that yet. I'm going to put a solid color first 
to give it a base, work on contouring my petals, and then I'm going to come back in here and tap, tap, tap. I'm looking for something I can tap, tap, tap with. Okay. If you don't have a crappy old brush, you can use paper towel. Just wad up a paper towel. Um, but I'm going to go, oh, you could go back to what we did a couple weeks ago. You could take um, Q-tips and tape them all together so you have a bundle of Q-tips. That's something fun to do to get some cool texture, but a paper towel will work fine. So I'm going to go through my, my paint bag and see if I can find a yuck old brush. And um, another minute and we'll move on. <laughs> I found it. I found the brush I was looking for. Look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, fan brush. Nice. Absolutely. Yes. Hey, Shauna Sue, can you show us how to fold the um, paper towels again? <laughs> I will, baby. We're not there yet, but when we get there, I'll show you. Okay. Shana. I want to know where the lady is in Florida. The other lady from Florida. Oh, Tawny. Uh, Tawny is. What's your handle, Tawny? Q X T A X. She's wearing all. Tawny, wave your wave your hand. Wave your hand so Beth can find you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. What part of Florida? I'm in Clearwater. Oh, okay. I'm down in um, Englewood, just south of Sarasota. Oh, okay. So awesome. you two, you two girls. If I ever am comfortable enough once COVID settles down to get on a plane, you two girls, I will come and see you both at the same time because you're, I, I know you're not close, but you're, you're close in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm originally from West Palm Beach. Oh, okay. Is it Colleen? Yeah. Awesome. I live in Columbus now, but. Shauna. I'm down. Oh, hello, Anita. How are you? Fine. Can you have a look at my canvas? That's beautiful, Anita. Look at all those colors. I put a light pink too. Very light pink before the red. Yes, I love that. Oh, I thanks. wonder, I wonder, we're gonna put our center on next. I wonder if you make your center a little bigger. What do you think? Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah, I would definitely. Do definitely. Oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to pop, pop them in the chat, but I'm gonna go ahead and mute everyone again. Shona, just a minute. My last painting or so, I made some changes. How can I ask you questions or show you the video I made, the picture changes I made? Oh, you can email them to me or message on Crooked Door Studio Facebook. Okay, thank you. I would love to see. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, here we go. So let's take this opportunity. I know that um, I wanna get some lovely orange, yellow, red down in here, but I know I'm gonna have to add a lot of white to be able to cover up some of the places where I brought my brush strokes into my center. So let's go ahead and take some white and just paint that center. Let's get a nice base there. So big brush, clean it out, dry it off. And if you have a little color in there, that's fine, but you want it to be mostly white because the white is block out white. And Anita, this is where you might make your center just a little bit bigger. I think that would be lovely. I'm not trying to get it solid. I'm just trying to get a base on there. So my other colors, I don't have to add so much white 
to cover things up. They'll be able to be a little more uh, solid, a little darker. Okay. There we go. Ooh, I got a little blue, a little red in there. That's okay. Don't worry, you can't even see it, but it's okay. I just want to get that nice, solid, solid base back in. All right. Okay. So let's take another couple minutes to do that. We're going to get ready and start to contour our petals a little bit. Now, you can do this or not. It's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to wait another minute before I start talking about it, though, because I need, uh, I need everybody to, to hear what I'm saying about it. So wait another minute so you get that white face in the middle. And I'm already starting to look at my painting and figure out which way it goes. Anybody else? Are you flipping it around? Trying to figure it out? <gasps> ooh, ooh. Does it go this way this time? I don't know. No, I really do think it goes that way. Yeah. I think it goes that way. I love that red straight out. That's a lovely place to write a message. But flip yours around and see how you feel about it. Um, now we're getting close to the time to figure out which direction it wants to go. Because if you were with us early on, because I painted this vertically, I put my highlight in my center on the top right and my shadow bottom left. But then when I put my word on there, now my highlight and my shadow are in the wrong place. My highlight should be here and my shadow should be down here. So before we do that part of it, we'll want to rotate our painting and make sure we have up, up and down, down. Okay, so we have that white in there. We're just going to leave it, leave it set for a minute. Let that dry a little bit. So let's take a look. Some of these petals, whoop, just kicked my easel. Um, some of these petals that are the little ones, not the ones that go all the way down, they're the little ones back in here. If we want to add a little bit of darkness to push those back, this is totally optional. You don't have to. But what if we take that color and add a little bit of a darker color back in there. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna use, you can use either your pointy brush. You know, for this one, I think I will use my pointy brush. I was gonna say your pointy or your medium skinny ways. I think I'm gonna use pointy because I've got some real, real points down in there I wanna get to. So this one's orange-ish. So I'm going to take orange and a dark, I'm going to go a little darker. I'm going to go back to red. So orange, a little bit of red to make that orange a little bit darker. And I'm going to get right down in there in that V. Darken that petal that's behind, darken that up a little bit. Again, this is all optional. You don't have to. It's just an extra kind of up in our game a little bit here. This one, same thing. He's lighter, so it looks like he's forward, but it's just the tip of that petal. So my brain knows it should be back. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red, right down there in that V. And I'm starting down at the V and pull up and away, out. It just pushes that pedal. It's so subtle, but it just pushes that pedal right back in there. Okay. I'm going to work my way on around. I've got another one down here, this yellow pedal. So yellow, it's the color of the pedal. 
And then the darker color would be oh, either orange or green. You could go either way, either side of them. But I want to get right in there and darken, darken that V up just a little bit. Let's see. Ooh, this guy. Um, let's see. Oh, this one. He's behind. So let's try just solid blue. I might even need to add a little bit of black to make him really dark. Just right there in that V. Just to push him back a little. So let's take a few minutes and play with this. This is one of those things that you could play with forever. It's one of those little nitpicky things. So we're just gonna take a few minutes. You can keep playing with this part even after class is over. Set this guy back a little bit. Just red, maybe a little bit of blue. Again, totally optional. Just ups your game a little bit more. Okay. So while I have that little brush in hand, this is something that make, makes people nervous. You can do it or not. I'm gonna take that little brush with a tiny, tiny bit of black and those petals that come all the way to the center, I'm gonna do little, little outline marks, okay? They're only, ooh, maybe about an inch or so long. They start at the center and they pull out and away and fade off to nothing. Some places I've gotten bold and I've even added a few in the middle of the petal. And that helps, um, that adds a little more texture like that petal is a little wrinkly, a little creased down in there. But we're gonna start with that pointy brush with just a tiny, tiny bit of black. So I have my pointy brush. I'm swirling it and drawing it through that black, getting it to a really nice little point. Start with this process on your dark petals. It's gonna be much less shocking. If you start with this black over on that bright yellow orange, you're gonna be like, oh crap, right? But if you start with it over here, it's gonna be less shocking. So I'm gonna, right here between my green and my green yellow. I wanna, oh, just, ooh, almost dropped my brush. Just very lightly outline those a little bit. I'm gonna head over into the bright colors so you can see what I'm doing. So in between these two petals, just a little bit, oh, of an outline. Now, when you feel bold, what if, oh, I get a couple little, Oh, just a couple little marks right there. Again, it helps my petal look like it's wrinkled or creased. So again, start in the dark, it's much less shocking, and work your way around into those bright colors. Those shouldn't be, those marks shouldn't be more than about, I got kind of long on some of those, they shouldn't be more than about an inch. So I'm gonna keep working my way around here. This is one of those things that helps define your petals. If your petals have all started to grow together, this is one of those things that's gonna help. The next thing we're gonna do is do some white swooshes 
out toward the ends of our petals, that'll help too. But right now, just black. Just black, about an inch or so out from the middle. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I got a little Chris Stapleton going in the background. It's perfect for what we're doing right now. All right, nice and easy. I can't turn it up because as Marie reminded me, I'll get, uh, they'll shut down the sound on my YouTube video if you can hear it in the background. So I'm sorry if you can't hear it, but trust me, it's lovely. And I know this part can be kind of frustrating for some of us because black is so powerful and strong. Breathe, breathe it out. And I'm going to move on because I don't want us to focus too hard on that black, right? Because our painting's not done yet. We'll start to judge it and we'll be like, oh, that black is making me crazy. So we're just going to move on. We're going to move right on past it. We're going to leave it alone. Now you can stay with your little brush if you want, or you can move to one of your uh, medium flat brushes. I've got my medium filbert. My medium filbert, I'm gonna take just a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna use it anyways. And I'm just gonna get some, some shushes. I'm just gonna contour those petals a little bit. Um, with the black, we started in the dark, so it would be less shocking. With your white squishes, start in your light petals, so it'll be less shocking. And this is one of those things that's really hard to teach. It's just a feel. I'm just gonna ooh, swoosh right along, right along the edge of some of these petals. It just helps pop them a little bit. So maybe a little. Oh, right there. Just a little. Ooh. I'm using my medium brush with the tiny, tiniest bit of paint on it. Working in those bright colors first. Then I'll get over into the dark colors. A little shush here and a little shush there. Little bits of shushes. Over here where my petals got really oh I see the comment. Do we put black lines if it's a daisy? Um if it's a white daisy, maybe start with gray. The black might be too big of a contrast with a white daisy. Start with gray, and then if you feel like it's not enough, then you can move on to black. Sorry, I just saw that comment. So this is one of those sections where I feel like these petals could be just all one big mass, but if I take that little bit of white and I shush right along there, it helps separate those guys out just enough. Oh, you guys, I love this painting, these colors. Ugh, yes. Mm. 
love it. And there's a point that we can go too far. I like to find that right after I've gone too far. So I'm gonna stop that brush in that water cup, take a few minutes, and then we'll we'll get into the center of that flower. And that's where I'll show you if you don't have a crappy old brush or you don't have a bundle of Q-tips, um, that's where you can use a paper towel and I'll show you how to do that, okay? So let's take, how about five minutes? Because that part will be the, one of the last things we'll do other than the words. So how about at 9.14 right now, how about 9.20? We'll come back and do this. We'll do the center of our flower. We're gonna need yellow, just little bits of color at this point. Little bit of yellow, little bit of red, little bit of white, okay? And this is the point where you need to figure out which direction your painting is gonna go. So I think mine is gonna go this way because I have this petal here that will be lovely for my word. So that's the way my, my painting's gonna, I think that's the way it's gonna live. So figure out which direction your painting's gonna go. Um, a little white, yellow, and red. Um, clean paper towel if you don't have a crappy old brush. And about five minutes, we'll come back and we'll finish that out. So I'm giggling because as we've gone through um, this whole pandemic situation, do you remember in the beginning when everyone was so panicked and, and rightfully so, we didn't know what was going to happen, um, but everyone ran and bought toilet paper while the rest of the planet was buying toilet paper. Um, I was buying big bags of Twizzlers because I am not about to go through pandemic on lockdown at home without Twizzlers. So I think I'm finally opening my last big bag of Twizzlers. <laughs> and I know my red vine people out there are like, ew, but that's what I say to red vines. Ew, I like Twizzlers. And I feel like you fall in either one camp or the other. You don't, uh, <laughs> right, Jennifer? You don't, uh, <laughs> you're either a Twizzler or you're a uh, red vine. I don't know very many people that are both. I know a lot of people that are neither but I don't know very many people that are both. Oh, oh, fresh Twizzlers. <laughs> so anyway, the rest of the, right, Jessica, Twizzlers all the way. So the rest of the planet's out there buying toilet paper. I got my Twizzlers and my Eggos. My husband went straight to Costco and bought like the big monster case of Eggos because 
God forbid I would be without my egos. I've said it before and I'll say it again. That man is a keeper. He's probably out right now wrangling chickens trying to get Amber back in the coop. <laughs> I'm going to stand here and paint just a little longer. He can handle that tonight. Because they're, they're babies. They're like, what, 11 weeks old. So they follow the big girls. I have other chickens that are two and three years old. And the little ones will follow them, kind of. But there's always one, Amber or Phyllis. Phyllis is just crazy. Um, they'll be out just wandering around, middle of the night, like nothing. Like that's what they're supposed to be doing. Crazy chickens. So if you ever drive past my house out in the country, you hear me in the middle of the night yelling, don't you know we have coyotes? I'm yelling at the chicken. I feel like this is the point where I point out to um, people always ask me what's in my big cup that I drink. It's water. This is sober. <laughs> okay, so another minute. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, get ready to put that center on there. Again, if you don't have a big old crazy brush, just find a clean paper towel. We can use that. Um, we need a little bit of white, a little yellow, and a little red. We're going to start with yellow. We're going to use the red for shadow and the white for highlight. At this point, we need to figure out which direction our painting goes because I want highlight at the top right and shadow bottom and left. So figure out which direction your painting's going to live. Flip it around, have your friends give you, give you input. Sometimes we have to flip it around and step away from it for a minute. But I very much feel like mine goes this direction because this petal being straight out like that, it's a lovely place if you're gonna write a word. Um, if you're not sure if you're gonna write a word, these, um, these stretch canvases are lovely if this is what you have because you can go to Walmart, Meyer, Hobby Lobby, wherever, um, find a metal wreath hanger and bend it so it goes up under your, um, the frame of your canvas, hang it on your door, which I think is lovely, especially if you have a storm door to go over it to protect it. And then you could write your name on it, right? And leave it hang on your front door. I'm kind of thinking I might do that with this one. I'm not sure, we'll see. But I get to the point, how many of these, how many paintings do I need, right? I already have 15 of this one. Um, so I'm not super concerned if it gets damaged by weather. Um, and on the front of my house, it could, um, but I'll have another painting to go there, to go there soon anyway. Okay, so I have, let's, uh, let's go ahead and finish this out. I have identified how my painting is going to live, and I like it this way. So I'm going to start with yellow, maybe a little bit of white. Now, if you have a crummy old brush, use that crummy old brush. Um, when you load that brush, if you don't have a crummy old brush, we'll talk paper towel in a minute. If you don't have a crummy Back up, got ahead of myself. If you do have a crummy old brush, when you load it, load it like this. Don't load it like this, like you would normally. Don't drag it through the paint because we want it to stay splayed out. If you drag it through the paint, it'll collapse it down and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna load it like this in my yellow and maybe a little bit of white. And if your white's still wet on your canvas, that's okay. Okay, so yellow and white. You notice I opened those Twizzlers, didn't even eat one. I just opened them to smell them. Okay, yellow and white. And let's fill that whole thing in. I'm just tap, tap, tapping with yellow and white. Okay, tap, tap, tap. Now, if you don't have a crummy old brush, and you just have a paper towel, you can do it with paper towel. I have um, my half sheets of paper towels. 
So I'm going to take that and fold it. So if you're using a full paper towel, quarter it. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm just going to start to pull it into the middle. Zoop, 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 zoop. That's it. And then I'm just going to stomp it a little bit right in there in my hand. There we go, little we'll stomper. Yellow, little white. I'm loading it the same way. I'm tapping, tapping in those colors. And I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. Got outside of my white circle a little bit. I'm okay with that. The center of a daisy flower would be a little fuzzy, right? So it's okay if it goes outside your white circle a little. Okay. Tap, tap, tap. Tappity, tap, tap. Tappity, tap, tap, tap. I love it too. I'm using enough paint. I know you probably can't see it but I have like texture in there because I'm using so much paint. I love that. Okay. So right now it's just yellow and white. You could add a little bit of orange if you want. I don't think I'm going to yet. I'm gonna start with my highlight first. So we said highlight is top and right. So I'm gonna grab just white and right along that edge with white. Top and right is highlight. And it kind of blends into my blends into the middle. You can kind of start to see it. I'm gonna refold that paper towel because I had a lot of yellow on there. So I'm gonna refold it, flip it inside out here, go again. So I just flipped it inside out, crumble it all back down. So there's a little yellow in there, but not much. White. Again, acrylic paint blends while it's wet, so I can do this. I can go straight white out here. And as I go, I'm picking up little bits of yellow as I work my way closer to the middle. Oh, that's nice. Now, if I have highlight up there, I have to have shadow down there. So I'm going to take some yellow and a tiny bit of red. That red's gonna be powerful. So, ooh, just a, ooh, a tiny eek. So afraid I'm gonna get too much. But if I do get too much, I'm just gonna move it around. So shadow, top right, I'm sorry, highlight, top right, shadow, bottom and left. Ooh, and that's bold. But that's okay. I'm just going to keep tap, tap, tapping, moving it around, working my way to the middle. Voila, just like that. I feel like I might want it a little bit, a little darker down here. <laughs> this is where stuff goes sideways. I'm going to do just a little more. You know, that happens to artists all the time, right? That's not just a novice thing. That's not just a newbie thing. We like to go just a little bit too far. But what we know as artists is we let it dry, paint it back over. That's why I do what I do, because I've made every mistake on the planet. You let it dry, paint it over. It's all about learning how to fix those oopses, right? And sometimes they turn into happy accidents. Your little Bob reference for the night. 
Ooh, that is so red. Ooh. I grab a little more yellow. Oh, that's good stuff. Okay. So I do believe we may just about call it done. I feel pretty good about that. Um, let's talk about a couple more things. And I know um, you're going to continue to play and mess, and that's perfect. But I want to talk about a couple more things before we end tonight. So to put your word over here, you could map it out with a pencil first, right? It might be hard to see. Um, if you have chalk, I love to map it out with chalk first. I will always, before I write, I will always leave the cap on if I'm gonna use a pen, leave the cap on and write it first with the cap on. That helps me map out where it needs to go. If you're gonna use a paint pen, never, ever, ever shake these with the cap off. The tip will come out and it'll poop all over your painting and that's hard to come back from. Um, so lay it flat because the pens are about gravity if you're gonna use a pen. If you're gonna use a brush to put a word on there, you could use your pointy brush so I'm gonna clean that pointy brush out, dry it off. And then I'm gonna take a drip of water. It's just hard to show, but right there in the edge of my black paint, I'm gonna take a drip of water and thin that black paint down a little bit. So if you're gonna write with it, if you're gonna write with your brush, if you get it a little closer to the consistency of ink, that'll help it flow a little better. And then you can practice on your on your plate, right? To see if you've got it the right um, the right consistency. If you're going to glitter, remember thin paint, paint can, they all dry really fast. So you're gonna have to move fast if you have glitter to put on there. So You'll get your word on there immediately, lay it flat, sprinkle your glitter on there, and then tap it off into the into a trash can or into a plate that you can put back in your in your glitter bin. Okay. So I'm gonna think about my word because I actually might put my last name on there and hang it on the front door. I'm gonna I'm gonna ponder that. Oh, my last name is Jordan. I might actually turn the center into the O. So if I have a big J here, O, R, D, A, N. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna think about it. So I'm not gonna finish mine yet. If I were going to finish it though, the very last thing an artist does is sign their painting. So usually bottom right, bottom left, right? Sign down in the corner. Stretch canvases are lovely because you can sign on the edge if you want with a paint pen or a Sharpie. You can sign on the back if you want, but if you're gonna sign on the back, never here, always out here on the edge. If you sign with a paint pen or a Sharpie here, it could bleed through to the front, and that's not what you want after all that hard work you just put in. So if you're gonna sign, you always wanna sign out here on the edge. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, for the sake of class, I'm going to call this done. Um, it's 9.32, let's say 9.35, we'll call it done. That means one hour. So you have until 10.35 to take a picture of you with your painting. I would love to see you with your painting. So 10.35, take a picture, I'm sorry, by 10.35, private message it to Crooked Door Studio Facebook. You can also email it to me. I know some of you do that and that's fine. Um, let's see, what else should we talk about? I have the painting all ready for next week. I'm super excited about it. So again, um, it's water and boats and 
palm trees and it's very tropical and very happy. Lots of purples and blues and reds. So we'll call this done tonight. Thank you all so much for participating. I so appreciate you. If you missed something or, or you had to stop, that's okay. Um, sometime tomorrow, I will have this posted up on YouTube. Um, if you're not sure what the YouTube channel is, check out Crooked Door Studio on Facebook. The YouTube channel is there. So again, we'll, by 1035, make sure you send your painting to me. So I will, um, I'll go ahead and stay on for a few minutes. I'll give you the opportunity to unmute yourself if you need to, if we have any questions. But we're going to call this done at 9.35, so you have until 10.35 to send your picture to me. So let me go in here. Okay, no. you have the ability to unmute yourself if you have a question. Shana. You're welcome, Colleen. Shauna, Shauna, this is Anita. Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi, I was wondering, I'm just worried that what will we do once the lockdown is over. I hope you will continue classes for us. Oh yeah, once the, once lockdown is over and we're back in the studio, my husband is actually right now, as a matter of Hello. fact, working uh -huh. on um, making an arm to hang over my easel uh -huh. so I can continue to stream classes on Zoom and record them for YouTube. No, but you will continue to give us classes like this? I will, yes. Because this is my one, once a week, I just love this session. I hear, I hear that from a lot of people. This is their Saturday night therapy. So yes, it, it will continue. Because just like you have uh, something, uh, issues, I have psychological issues. So it yep. keeps me away from depression. Ab absolutely. I, I firmly believe that. And I'm so glad you're here. And yes, it will continue. There are enough people that want to see it continue. We it'll continue, continue the same Saturday or some other day you'll take? You know, I'm not sure if it'll be Saturday or Friday night. I'm not yeah. sure yet. I'm still working on the studio schedule. Okay. But it Thank will be up on YouTube. So oh. you can access it at any time then. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Anita. Jessica, did you put your dove on there? Yes, I did. Here, I can show you. Oh, how fantastic is that? And you made the center of art. Yes, I did. <laughs> you are so stinking cute. Oh, thank you. I had to put a bird on it, of course. <laughs> oh, you had to. You had to. So I, I almost messaged my friends um, that do the Ruby Moon stitchery for the masks. I almost messaged her and was like, birds, Jessica needs everything birds. And then I thought, no, no, you can pick your own fabric. I, I might do one of her Harry Potter ones because I have a lot of birds. And I was like, ooh, Harry Potter would be good too. <laughs> so. Yeah, so the, the new masks that she got for me today, I think I have probably eight or nine masks from them. And I like them. I think the standard size is good because they have those pleats. So. I can, it has the, um, the metal in the nose so I can form it and then set my glasses on top of it so it doesn't fog up my glasses. And then if I just open up one of those pleats, it's enough to go way down under my chin and they go pretty far. Um, she talked about the elastic straps being really long, <laughs> but my face must be really big because they fit, <laughs> they fit perfect. So... Um, but the ones I got today, I got the bug one, which I posted a picture of that. And then I have another one. She said she got the fabric just for me. It's black and glittered and has broomsticks on it. You, oh my you gosh, know. that's awesome. I love it. For the width that I am. <laughs> I me actually, I measured the ones I had and I might actually do the medium because it's a 0.25 difference. So, but, um, but all yeah, of them. I Great, I think so. it, because the medium's smaller than the standard, right? Um, yeah, it, it's only 0.25 lengthwise, so it's not, because I have yep. like a three, 
and then one that's 3.5. And so I think in between would actually be perfect. So, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for, I can't wait to get them. Absolutely. Thanks for supporting local and they're, they're good people. They're my people. Oh, awesome. Well, th thanks again for tonight too. You're welcome, honey. See you soon. Yeah. All right. I figured out my saying. Okay. Where are you, Tani? Um, I don't you know if you me. can see it. Um, oh, I see you. Okay. Can you see my words? No, I can't see them. The, the light's hitting it weird. Okay. What are your words? Uh, peace, love, light. Oh, Tawny. <laughs> That's good stuff, baby. That's good stuff. All right. It's well all, done. it's all you, babe. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> you, just, you, just made, you just made me get the job of the hut laugh. <laughs> I right. have I have 37 chins when I really try. I can get them all. <laughs> I can try. I don't know. I, I actually try. Nice. <laughs> Good looking chins. Well done. Marie, let's see right. chins, dude. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Donnie. Good job, Marie. Bye. Bye. All right. I see um, pictures are starting to come through. So um, you have until 1035 to send your uh, to send your finished picture to me so I can get them all together and post it up as a group photo. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here so I can start working on that and getting the YouTube video together to load for tomorrow. So thank you all so much for joining. I love you. You make my heart happy.